Hey guys, this is the follow-up to my video where I had to tell four truths and one lie. And you were supposed to guess which one was the lie. So let's start this off by going over, the I believe it was the first thing that I said, which was that I was involved in some sort of top secret laser testing for the military. And that I was sworn to oath not to talk about the details of. That is absolutely true. I've mentioned before maybe not in a video that um, I used to do laser shows for a laser company for laser light shows and uh, it was just me and the boss the guy who owned all the lasers and had all the knowledge uh, to begin with and we would do laser shows mo mostly for um, for underground raves and stuff but also we would do them for uh, corporations like we did one show for I remember for PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, I think that laser show was about it was about six minutes. The whole the whole laser sh actual laser part of the show was six minutes long, and I think we got paid like six thousand dollars or seven thousand dollars for that. But the average work that we would do was we would show up at the underground uh like like an underground paintball arena or like a field out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, you know we had the deal work out with the, worked out with a um, a production company and we would throw do the laser light lights for a all night underground rave. Of course, those jobs uh, consisted of us showing up at around like six o'clock, maybe four or five o'clock in the afternoon, and then getting set up and then running the show all night long until about six o'clock in the morning, and then tearing tearing the all of our equipment down for about four hours in the morning. Uh, you know, so then we're there till we're not even getting home the next day till like eleven o'clock, I and mean, that was for about the same amount of money as the corporate shows. I remember during the raves, like I had a security pass, so I could go wherever I wanted to, and I could get back in the party. And I would be very sober at most of these things. Oftentimes, I'd be sober, and I would have to have to keep my head about me. And one thing I started doing was I started following people that were. Like, or following instances or incidences where someone was wigging out, where they were overdosing or basically, yeah, where they were overdosing on acid or whatever it was that they were taking. And normally if you're in the party, you can't just come to and fro, but since I had the pass, I could just follow them out and watch and see what happened when the ambulance came. And um, I remember following, I remember there were some people, it's real bad, I remember the ambulance would the medics like they came with the ambulance would treat people terribly sometimes sometimes not always and I remember I probably saw about six or seven people die right in front of my eyes I remember one in particular this one girl like a lot of it was GHB like the, which is this shit that you can like mix up in a bucket and it's like used as like a date rape drug but it doesn't really work all the time the way females are, it really fucks with them. Like, I've been to parties where we were doing the lasers for where they shut the whole thing down because they, like, this one time, we were out in this field kind of by a, a small town, and the town that was nearby ran out of ambulances to, to send to the party to pick, to, to come and try to save these girls' lives that were dying left and right. There was, like, eight or nine or ten that were already, like, on the verge of dying or were... In, in the end, they ended up, like, I think six people died all together at that party. Um, yeah, so, anyway, how does that go into uh, secret uh, government laser work? Well, we were contacted by a company that was a contractor for the government that was working on a top-secret, brand-new uh, military usage for, uh, for, la for lasers, involving lasers. So we had to go out to this warehouse, like, to sign all this shit that said we'd never talk about the details of it. And we did all of this testing. We basically brought out our laser equipment and did all the testing that they wanted. So I'm not supposed to discuss the details of which, but all I can say, I can say that I haven't seen this their invention like come to fruition yet. But then again, they say that the military's shit is, you know, 10 years ahead of everyone else. So maybe they did develop it and we just ain't seen it yet. I don't know. I'm not sure. Because what the laser that we had, if you're interested, was a full color spectrum white light argon laser. That's a Spectrum Physics 171. Uh, that's a um, that's an eight watt laser. Uh, we always split the beam, so we get about three and a half to you know close to four watts per beam out of each way. And then of course that would split again, however many ways we wanted to split it. 
So yeah, there's number one. Uh, let's go with this one. The Honduran Mafia. I said that I used to work for the Honduran Mafia. That is absolutely true. Um, these guys are not um, not a band, <laughs> as some people suggested. These guys were uh, Honduran Mafia. I don't know if there is a, a, a real connected Honduran Mafia that's above these guys. Or I, I often often see times where people think they're working for a certain mafia, but it's just a bunch of jokers who say they're are for this one mafia I don't know these guys had lots of guns and were very serious people and I had a certain something that I could perform for them uh, that was valuable to them and they could provide something uh, of quite a bit of payment in exchange for that so I worked for them for about oh uh, it was like three or four months I think and then uh, what happened was their whole entire thing got busted. I saw it on in the newspaper even. Um, they got deported back to Honduras. So whether they, I don't know what their ties were with any real Honduran mafia, but they sure put on a good show, and they sure had a lot of money. Oh, I'm related to Robert Duvall. Yes, I'm related to Robert Duvall very remotely. Um, he sends my family uh, greetings cards, or his assistant does, or his wife does, or whoever. Um, he knows my grandma. It's, it's, it's through marriage. Well, I was the vice president of Multi-Platinum Records. Uh, yes, that is also true. It's not as big of an operation as you think. Um, it was a the small uh, hip-hop uh, record store that I used to work for. And I used to make beats and sell beats out of the shop. And the owner was the president of his company, which was Multi-Platinum Records. Believe it or not, that was not taken by a huge... Um, you know, uh, label, <laughs> and I was uh, the vice president, so, and that business failed terribly bad. And I think that covers the four, um, the four truths, uh, that which leads us with the Rolling Stone magazine cover um, lie. I was never on the Rolling Stone magazine cover, although um, somebody, I saw one person commented that I could have been tricking could have been using a play of words and I could have taken my photograph and put it on top of a Rolling Stone magazine. I'm not that clever, man. So there you have it. There are the four truths and the one lie. So anybody who guessed uh, Rolling Stone magazine, you're right.